great pleasure to do an interview on a day with such joy and jubilation. The Bokka, Barahin, I mean, doesn't get much better than that. All the bees. Yeah. Bokka and Barahin, yeah. It's easy to say that, but I mean, I said it before we even won a race. If we ran, if we didn't win a race today, this was a great day today. It's a great day for this wonderful country and nation that we are. And South Africa, a rugby World Cup Kings in Japan! We're currently in the old parade ring at Turfentain, and in fact, the very self-same parade ring that will be used on Summer Cup Day. And it is also the same parade ring that will see Hawam make his first public appearance since his unfortunate scratching from the Vodacom Durban July. And it's Charity Mile Day, proudly sponsored by Empress Palace. It's also the day of the World Cup Rugby Final, and we're hoping that we're gonna be crowned World Cup champions yet again with all those coincidences as far as the Curry Cup is concerned and the cheaters, you've seen all those WhatsApps going around. We're hopefully going to chat to Mike de Kock shortly after the public gallop. There's been an enormous amount of hard work behind the scenes with his son Matthew, with Vengi, with Malan Toy, with a whole team of starters. And Mike will elaborate on that in due course. So let's, without any further ado, go down to the start of the 1200 meter mark, the very self-same start that will see Hawam participate in a pinnacle plate during the month of November. We all know now that he's not running in the Summer Cup. That will probably be left to his stable companions, Sokrat and Barahin, who's due to run in the charity mile today and must have an absolutely outstanding chance. So let's see where Team de Kock stand on the rehabilitation of Hawam. It appears that the military operation that you planned for today went beautifully. Andrew, thankfully, yes. Um, uh, we obviously, Gallatim team had to pass him through, uh, through the gates on a race day, which is very understandable from the authorities at the, at the jockey club. One wouldn't expect less. Um, and he came through with flying colours. But I, again, I must say, it probably had very little to do with me, to be very honest with you. It's Matthew, his team, the team behind him, it's Milan, it's the starters, uh, Gareth, uh, the handler, I think his name is Benny. Everyone's got an interest in this horse, which is the most amazing thing, that they, they actually want to see this happen. What happened today, he, he, he went through, everything went well, he galloped well. Uh, thankfully, obviously, he's got to get through through his, his race, his next race, which is going to be a 1,200, too short for him. Um, but uh, he has the class to be able to win a race like that, unless he bumps a, you know, a really good uh, sprinter. But you know, these are the things that happen behind the scenes. People like Vengi, who work with him on a weekly basis, in, out the pens, pressure halter, schooling him, uh, jockeys riding him. Callan, in fact, has had a lot to do with taking him to the gates every week, taking him out. So no one's doing any special favours for anybody. We, we want to present a horse that is tractable on the day. But for that to happen has taken a major team planning effort. Well, this young Kellen Murray amazes me. He's, he's like a little mini Dougie White in the way he's got the GoPro camera on and he... He's got a hell of a brain on him. He's improved a lot. I think a little bit of humility. Yeah. Uh, the Hong Kong experience, Singapore, where he, you know, he, he hit rock bottom. Yeah. Come back to South Africa and, and realign and refocus yourself. You know, when he was here, things were getting easy and flash cars, lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. We've all seen it with jockeys. But there's nothing like a humiliating and humbling experience. And Hong Kong is a great place for that. So is Mauritius funny enough in my opinion. <laughs> I'll strike it. I've seen I've seen a lot of jockeys go there and actually I mean I remember with Johnny Gerodas. He came back a very good jockey from Mauritius because he learnt a lot there. But you know for them to get out of this uh, in this environment of comfort, even myself as a trainer, I got out of this environment of comfort makes a big difference and it helps they learn and Callan's got the intellect to have learnt from it. Bob Urim, I think no body weight in gold could calculate what he means to racing, the way he, he brings other people and other celebrities to this party. Andrew, I use uh, the word friend not lightly um, in my life, and I regard myself as having a few friends um, that I surround myself with. And I think Bob Urim is a friend of racing. And that's, there's a, that says a lot for, for the mark of the man that he is, and for his patronage and his support, unwavering, he is a superhuman and he's a friend of our industry. And, I, and as I said to you, I don't use the word friend loosely. Well, I think it's poetic justice in a way because nobody likes a horse that is so talented 
like Buffalo Bill Cody, to get taken out of the race. But to win it the way you've won it with Barry Hinn is just spellbinding. Yeah, look, Buffalo Bill Cody is, uh, you know, he's, he's always been problematic. He's got brilliance that, I mean, I just, I've never got to the bottom of him. He's just, he's just, a, he's a super horse, I know that. Um, but the options are not to geld him. So sadly, he, you know, he didn't get you today. But we got the consolation prize uh, in terms of Barry But he would have been hard pressed to beat Barry Hinn today. Just I was going to ask you that I've question. Seen, just given what I saw. Barahin took the lead, Charms second, then comes Infamous Fox further back to Cascapedia, but they have to run to beat Barahin. Barahin's a two-length leader, second place is Charms, it's Barahin in the lead, and Barahin is going for gold. Barahin won the Piermont Empress Palace Charity Mile. And I think a soft track was very much in Barahin's favour today. He's always been a slightly problematic horse in his time, uh, and I think uh, the, the, the sting in the ground is definitely uh, was in his favour today. Is his best trip a mile, or do you think he's going to get 10 furlongs comfortably, looking at his pedigree, looking at the animal himself and the way in which he won? Well, if you, if you look at it, he, he, you know, he got the nine furlongs in the Jubilee very easily, going away from the field. Uh, however, he's now been rated the equal of Socrates and Awam, which is, he's been comfortably beaten from behind before. So um, I see now that I've got three horses rated 131 in my stable. While I feel very flattered, I think someone's lost the plot. Well, Mr. Gosden, I think that's not too bad. Thank you very much for that. 300 metres left to go, and the leader is Mohican towards the outside, but he's having a look at everything around him, and Alamiri now has a say up the inside. Further back, we find Titleist. It's Mohican. Alamiri now runs him down towards the inside. Alamiri took the lead. Mohican needs to battle back, but Alamiri is going to go on to win. Alamiri beat Mohican. Third goes the way of Franklin. Halavarad went up and took the lead with seven Patriots up the inside. A breakaway to Tyrus Express. Ideal day, and then comes Jungle Book, but Halavarad is powerful up front. He's now kicked two, three lanes clear. Second place is seven Patriots and Halavarad much too good. Halavarad has won. Second to seven Patriots. On my mind to worry about the loose horses everywhere. He's costing everyone. As they get to the final 200 and Magic School, the leader. Second place is Frosted Gold. Then comes Rivers Town, Roy, Tom and Eden Rock. Magic School. Now she's got the loose horse and Frosted Gold. The grey is running on strongly. Frosted Gold. Frosted Gold has won it. Second close. In second place is Bees. Further back Pretty Border. Ronnie's Candy. Ray's Riviera's towards the outside. Queen Supreme needs to see it out and she's building on her lead. Queen Supreme's gone three lanes clear. Bees second. Ronnie's Candy. Ray's Riviera. This is new royalty. Queen Supreme. De Cox got five. Queen Supreme is one and one in style. At job went up to take the lead. Factor 50 keeps tabs on him. Then comes Diamond Dancer. Bondi Blues towards the outside. At job the leader. Factor 50 a length away. Second Diamond Dancer a few lengths back in third. Bondi Blue is nearest us. At job got victory in his sights. He's a length and a half clear. At job it's another for De Kock. All credit to the whole De Kock team, Mr. De Kock, Matt, Vengi. Uh, too many names to name. A huge thanks to them and to Sheikh Hamdan and Angus Gold. Another pleasure to ride another one in their silks and to my sponsors, Highlands and Ridgemont. A very big thanks to them for taking me on board just a month ago and I'm glad I could bring them some success. And before you go, you've been given a big opportunity and you've taken full advantage. Well done. Yeah, just very grateful. Thank you.